Our motion is death is not final, and here to summarize his position supporting the motion that death is not final, Eben Alexander, an academic neurosurgeon and author of the best-selling book, Proof of Heaven. Well, I, I would like to um, go back to what Sean had said about how consciousness is very confusing to us, as is quantum mechanics. And I would put out there, I think they're related. There's a reason why they're both so confusing. And that's, you, you can chuckle, but in fact, that's what drove brilliant people like Einstein and others into mysticism. And in fact, I would say that that mystery has only gotten much deeper over time. We have not answered that at all. Uh, in support of my claim earlier about brain damage allowing enhanced uh, function, which really goes against the materialist model that Stephen talked about earlier, I point out two very common uh, examples in clinical practice, acquired savant syndromes in which stroke, brain uh, trauma, autism can allow superhuman mental function, something that's often seen that certainly has no explanation from the brain makes mind model, and also terminal lucidity. Uh, in which demented elderly patients often have periods of great clarity, especially around the time that they are encountering souls of departed loved ones that are there to es escort them over. And I would say that these uh, very commonly uh, observed phenomena really uh, demand a much deeper model of consciousness than we get out of the materialist models. Uh, point out that Dr. Wilder Penfield wrote a book in 1975, The, the uh, Conscious Mind. He probably still holds the record for having stimulated uh, the uh, brain and awake patients more than any other neurosurgeon, and never once did he duplicate any kind of situation of free will. He concluded very strongly that the mind consciousness is not created in the physical brain. And uh, I think it's important to point out that the pure materialism fails at the hard problem of consciousness and at the enigma of quantum mechanics, that the brain actually confines and limits consciousness, uh, that science acknowledging consciousness, soul, and the spirit becomes much stronger than the overly simplistic science of reductive materialism. Death of the physical brain and body is not final. Thank you. Thank you, Evan Alexander. Mm -hmm. And that is our motion, death is not final. And here to argue against the motion, Stephen Novella. He's a neurologist at Yale School of Medicine and founder of Science-Based Medicine. So up until a couple hundred years ago, um, every culture in the world believed that there was a life energy. They knew intuitively, they sensed that there was something fundamentally different about living things from non-living things. And they hypothesized that there must be some energy, some elan vital, spiritus, chi, whatever you call it, that fundamentally makes living things different than non-living things. But over the next you know, 100, 150 years, it's basically the 19th into the 20th century, we discovered biochemistry and genetics and developmental biology and all different principles of biology until essentially there was nothing left for the life force to do. We had explained everything that living organisms had do, and we explored the, the blurry line between living and non-living, and we realized that there's no fundamental difference there. It's just you, as you get increased com complexity, at some point you cross this fuzzy line and you, you're doing a process that we call life. Well, we're kind of going through the same process, or so maybe a little bit delayed with consciousness. We, we understand that the brain causes consciousness. We certainly don't understand a lot about how it is produced exactly, but we're making progress. Our research paradigms are working quite well, thank you, and we're making lots of progress. It's just as irrational, if you will, to hypothesize that there is some magical energy or some non-corporeal thing, stuff, that is consciousness, as it was 200 years ago to say that, well, because we can't explain life, then we need a life force. We don't need a brain force, a mind force, any more than we needed a life force 200 years ago. The fact is that the neuroscientific community is progressing relentlessly with the, with the paradigm that is materialist, reductionist, we're looking for neuroanatomical correlates of everything that the mind does, and that research program is very, very successful, and is how well an idea advances in science is more telling about how valuable it is, how true it is, than what our current state of knowledge is. Our current state of knowledge is always going to be incomplete. It doesn't mean that our ideas are wrong or are weak. That's why you have to vote against this proposition. Thank you, Stephen Novella. And the proposition is, death is not final. And here to summarize his uh, position in support of the motion that death is not final, Raymond Moody. He's a medical doctor and author of the book Life After Life, in which he coined the term near-death experience. Raymond Moody. Uh, first of all, I want to say that to me, to this day, the notion of life after death is very counterintuitive. 
I think as a non-religious person, I had no background in that. It never occurred to me as a young astronomy uh, buff that there might be something beyond this. I've been through a process now of 40 plus years that finally drove me into this situation where I'm sort of forced to say, almost against my will, that death is not final. There is a life after death. Um, basically, what happened to me was that hearing thousands of people with near-death experiences, hundreds of people with shared death experiences who had the identical experience we call a near-death experience, except they weren't ill or injured. They were simply there at the bedside of someone else who died. And uh, I have seen joint transcendent experiences where, for example, a physician and a critically ill patient would have some sort of joint transcendent experience at the same time. That leads me to be forced almost into a position to say that I trust these people's judgment. It seems to me that they've been somewhere where I haven't been, and I can begin to put a little picture together of, um, of what they're talking about. So for that reason, I would say um, I'm on board. I think there is life after death, so. Vote, vote, vote for the afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... Thank you, Raymond Moody. Our motion is death is not final, and here to summarize his position against the motion, Sean Carroll. He's a theoretical physicist at the California Institute of Technology and author of The Particle at the End of the Universe. When I was about six years old, I had uh, an emotional formative experience that apparently many other people share similar things. I was in bed, you know, going to sleep, sort of thinking about the day and so forth, and I started crying. I was just bawling uncontrollably, so much so that my mom heard me from, you know, her bedroom and came running in and said, what is wrong? And I said, uh, someday our grandmom is going to die. And someday you're going to die, and someday I'm going to die. We're all going to die. And, you know, she had to explain, well, yes, uh, and, and so forth, and she had her own version of the story. And the reason I'm telling the story is because even as convinced as I am that death is final, I have absolutely no desire to belittle the people in the room who disagree, who feel the other way. This is an incredibly important central issue to our lives. I personally am convinced by the overwhelming scientific evidence from physics, from neuroscience, etc., that there is one world, the natural world, biology is a process that can end, and death is and then final. And to me, that fact, the finitude of our lives, gives enormous poignancy and importance to the finite number of years that we have here on Earth. Our lives here are not dress rehearsals. This is the act. This is the one performance that we get. That does not remove meaning or value from the lives we're leading now. It gives, it forces us to give meaning to everything we do because we only have a finite number of things to do. If evidence came in on the other side, I would change my mind quickly as the evidence was good enough. But I think that we're past the point where it's a scientifically interesting question. I think that we know enough to conclude that death is final. And personally, I think that that is okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sean Carroll. And that concludes closing statements.